Good morning, grandkids. I'm down in my basement with a good, scary book. I thought I'd stand between my two mannequins down here. Although I'm not going to activate them. Amigo's kind of hiding around the corner. Maybe I ought to turn that music down a little bit. Yeah. All right. Now let's look at the book that I intend to read. Do you remember when I read you the book, uh, A Cabin in the Woods? And that man was constantly scared because he kept hearing a woman weeping and then he would see a ghost in the woods and no matter where he went trying to run out of the woods, he kept hearing this woman weeping. I think that this book is about that woman. This book is called The Woodcutter's Wife, as told by Mogan Sana Molag. The legend tells us of a woodcutter who built a shack deep within the pine forest there he hoped to live in peace with his family. And I think this was the shack that that, uh, the cabin in the woods was. The woodcutter's wife lived well for a time, but without warning, the weather turned bitterly cold and spoiled the harvest. Before long, with their meager supply of food, all but gone, the family was starving. Late one snowy night, a traveler knocked on the door, seeking shelter from the biting cold. Always generous of heart, the woodcutter welcomed the stranger into his home, apologizing that he had no food to offer. With a smile, the traveler cast off his cloak to reveal the garments of a mage. As the woodcutter and his wife and his family looked on, the mysterious visitor reached into his satchel and withdrew a skull, scroll tied with a silver ribbon. No sooner had the wizard unfurled the scroll and read the words aloud when a great feast appeared from out of thin air. That night, nobody in the woodcutter's cabin went hungry. Day by day, the snow piled up. Every night, the mage produced another scroll from his bag and read the words, each time summoning a new feast. On the fifth night, the woodcutter's wife awoke her husband to confess her mistrust of their magical guest. Surely, she argued, there was some price to pay for the magical feasts that everyone enjoyed night after night. The woodcutter would have none of it. After nearly dying from the lack of food, his family was eating well. The divines had sent them a gift, he explained, and it was foolish to question their wisdom. But the woodcutter's wife would not be persuaded. Every night, she grew more and more fearful and more desperate. She was certain that the family had entered into a devil's bargain and the time would soon come when the mage would ask for something unspeakable in return for his gifts. While everyone in the cabin slept, the woodcutter's wife snuck out to the, a bed and took her husband's axe in hand. She cr 
crept into the traveler's room, and with one swing, she lopped off his head. Suddenly, the wizard's disembodied head awoke. His eyes opened wide, and he, when he beheld his maimed body, he let forth a terrible cry. Awakened by the horrified scream, the woodcutter and his children rushed into the room and gasped at the terrible sight of the decapitated mage. With his last gasp of breath, the traveler laid a fearful curse on the woodcutter's wife. After her mortal death, she was damned to rise once again and walk the woods alone only to burn at the rise of, of the sun. To this day, those who walk the pine forest late at night tell tales of a weeping woman glimpsed between the trees. She carries a bloody ax, the stories say, and is terrifying to behold. So don't you know that that was the lady that that man who came upon this cabin heard crying and saw it going through the woods at night? I'm sure it was. Okay, grandkids, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a creepy tale. And that's going to be it for this time. I'm sure those two books were linked. And if I'd have had this book, I'd have read it right after the other one or maybe ahead of the other one. But nevertheless, I thought it was a good story, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time, grandkids. Bye-bye.